What's going on everybody? Hope you're having a very good day today and hope that you had a good weekend. Now obviously if you're a football fan, there are going to be some of you that had a good weekend and some of you that didn't have a good weekend and maybe some that hit a little bit of a middle ground. But we're going to go through it all today because today this is this weekend in the Premier League and there were some big fixtures this weekend and some big, big results as well. So we're going to have a kick things off on a Friday night, as they seem to like to do right now. On a Friday night, we kick things off with Leicester versus Newcastle. And Leicester had been in really good form, I felt. I thought that they'd been in some good form, scoring goals, getting Jamie Vardy back on form, Madison looking brilliant. And it just did not connect on this night when they played Newcastle. And it's a really weird one, because Newcastle, I don't feel, are a team that are very good away from home. But in this instance, they put it together. I don't think the stats do tell the whole story because Leicester absolutely, like a Brendan Rodgers team likes to, they bossed the possession, they had slightly more chances, but less shots on target. And the key stat here, obviously, is that Newcastle took their chance. Iosi Perez with a beautiful header, nice powerful header past the goalkeeper. And that was the way it stayed. I think they scored on like 32 minutes or something like that. And that was the way it stayed. You know, not like Leicester fielded out a, a weakened team or anything like that. They still had Damari Gray, Yuri Tielemans, James Madison, Harvey Barnes and Didi. All those guys, they still had a very, very strong team out and they just could not break down Newcastle. And in fairness, Newcastle actually probably should have won the game 2-0 with a blasting of a free kick from Rondon that hit the bar, I think it did. Very, very good result. And it leaves both teams, Leicester still 7th, but now they're tied on points with Wolves, who now have a game in hand on Leicester. Also means that Everton aren't too far behind either. And Newcastle, with that victory, take themselves 10 points. 10 points away from the relegation zone. Now, I'm not entirely sure. I think my maths is correct that there's 12 points still for grabs in the remaining four games. But they are practically safe. Now, Newcastle are practically safe for another season unless something cataclysmic happens and they get relegated by losing all of their remaining games. They are pretty much safe. A very good job done by Rafa Benitez, it has to be said. Then we move on to Saturday, kicking things off. I think it was the 12.30 kickoff, which was Tottenham versus Huddersfield. And for the most part, it was looking quite pedestrian for a while. But... Tottenham kicked things into gear. Lucas Moura, I think, being the man of the match here, and it's quite obvious why. He scores a hat-trick, and it was a... You know what? He scored late goals as well. I'd actually stopped watching when it was 2-0, and I stopped watching by about, like, 70 minutes or something like that, whatever it was. They were 2-0. It looked like it was just going to peter out to a 2-0. And then I see the results later, and it was 4-0. Lucas has scored a hat-trick, and uh, Wanyama... Wanyama scored a really good opening goal for these guys. But it's another game at home for Tottenham. They're brand new home and they pulled off a victory against Huddersfield. All right, it's Huddersfield. A lot of people are taking Huddersfield, you know, they're taking them to the cleaners right now because they're already relegated and they're not the strong. They're quite clearly not the strongest team in the Premier League. But still, it's a massive result for them. And it also means that they definitely have another outlet in Lucas Moura as well as Hyung Min Son. And with Harry Kane being out, it's massive for Spurs. You can't really say much about Huddersfield, to be honest. They're already relegated, and it kind of... They weren't fighting when they had something to fight for, and it just didn't look like they were fighting on that day. Southampton beat Wolves 3-1, and I think... I think that Southampton are going to be a hell of a team next season. I really do believe that. I honestly believe that. So you've got um, Wolves, and now sat 8th. They've still got a chance of getting top 7 if they can, if they want it, if they want it enough, it's there to the taking. Leicester losing puts them in a good position to do that. But Southampton are now eight points away from the relegation zone. They're in a, a just slightly less better position than Newcastle, but they're almost there. It's one of those things. If they if they pick up another win, then they're guaranteed safety. Same thing with Newcastle. If they pick up another win, guaranteed safety. Um, I don't think anything can change that, to be honest, unless Cardiff pick up wins. But yeah, that's by the by. Good performance by Southampton on the on the uh, face of things. Again, I think this this is a, a run of games that I actually couldn't watch because they're three o'clock kickoffs and they are extremely awkward over here with three o'clock kickoffs. You can't just watch them. Um, but Southampton absolutely did not have much of the possession. They had 
much more chances, shots on goal, which are the ones that matter the most. People talk about possession football, and I truly believe that the only team that can pull off possession football in the entire world is Barcelona. They pull off possession, and they will they will absolutely punish you. They will win by possession just because they'll create so many chances. It doesn't mean the same in the Premier League. You can't. You can hold a lot of possession, but if you're not clinical enough, and for Southampton to win three one, Shane Long getting another goal. To, I think that's two goals in two games now. Nathan Redmond getting two goals in this game as well. Massive for Southampton, I believe. I think probably one of the shock results, if it, it probably is the shock result, it will probably is the shock result of Saturday. Fulham 2, Everton 0. Everton looking like they're on a pretty good run of form. They've beaten Arsenal. They were looking pretty good doing it as well. And then they come into this game, and having seen some of the highlights, it just actually doesn't... It doesn't look like they... they, they they lack something up front. And I don't know what their lineup was. Um, Calvert-Lewin up front. I don't know why they bought Seng Tosun. Or Cheng Tosun. How you, or Tosun. However you say his name. He was built by someone who I know. Like I, I've spoken to quite a lot. That he could be like a Turkish prime Higuain. If he's used properly. Used to play for Besiktas I believe it was. And a good goal scorer for them. Never gets a look in. Never gets a look in. So they're relying on Calvert-Lewin always performing. He's a very young lad. You've got Richarlison, uh, Bernard and uh, Gilfie. You've got experienced players in this team. You're looking at this team and it's like bloody hell. Seamus Coleman, Phil Jagielka, Jordan Pickford, uh, Kurt Zuma, Idrissa Gay, or Gway, however you say his name, and Andre Gomez. And then you've got a team that's already relegated. Already relegated. And people are saying, oh, they don't have the stress of trying to fight against relegation. I'll tell you one thing that, you know, it's a good result. For Fulham, it'll give them some confidence next year in the Championship if they can keep hold of half of these players they spent £100 million on. But you'd be pissed off as a fan. Where have these performances been all season? Where where have they been? If they put these types of performances in earlier in the season, where could they be, potentially? How annoyed would you be as a Fulham fan, honestly? Burnley beating Cardiff 2-0. Um, Cardiff had a, put a penalty turned down. Neil Warnock went absolutely mental because the penalty was given... And the referee changed his mind, and that is that's bad. He's had two. He's had a lot of. It's not just two. He's had a lot of refereeing decisions go against him. Ones that could change the game. They were one nil down at this point as well. You go one one. You never know which way that game's going to go. And then Burnley see it off in the ninety third minute with Chris Wood getting his second goal. It's tough on Cardiff. It really is. They are trying everything they can do, and then they get awarded a penalty, and it's taken away from them. It's bad. It really is bad. AFC Bournemouth smashed Brighton 5-0. Um, Brighton had someone sent off. I can't remember what his name was. What was it? Um, God, what was his name? Anthony Knockout, that's the one. Scored an absolute banger like a couple of weeks ago and then he goes and gets sent off for an absolutely stupid tackle. But yeah, you got like Dan Goslin, Ryan Fraser, David Brooks, Callum Wilson and Junior Stanislas getting the goals. Um, this was just pure Bournemouth. Pure Bournemouth. You're like They had literally 2% less possession, but everything else was just Bournemouth apart from corners. And they were just clinical against a Brighton team that kind of looks like they're almost... Th it looked like they were almost trying to throw in the towel in this game. It, it was not good. Um, Manchester United picked up a 2-1 victory over West Ham in another game that doesn't tell the whole story. Like From when I've, I've spoken to a Man United fan today that I work with, and he was genuinely worried, like, because I said to him, and said, "Look, I didn't get to watch the game. I was out for my for my mum's uh, birthday uh, celebration. So didn't get to watch it. Um, not sure if I'd have watched it anyway, to be honest. But I said, what? So what? What went on in that game? I didn't see the highlights of it. And he just went, mate. Honestly, we were dominated, and we were lucky to walk out of there with a victory. Two penalties by Paul Pogba." He said West Ham were all over them. They did have a lot of chances by the looks of things here. A lot of corners, a lot of free kicks. Bloody hell, a lot of free kicks. 17. And they were very... Man United fan that I know, he, he was just saying they were lucky to walk out of there with a 2-1 victory. He doesn't necessarily really understand how they did it, but they did. It's unfortunate for West Ham, but it is what it is at the end of the day. They've got to you know, pick themselves up and I think they were wanting to shoot for 7th place. I'm not sure that's going to happen with the teams that are in front of them, like Leicester, like Wolves, like Everton. Just don't think it's going to happen this season. They're going to have to build for next season as well. Now, moving things on to the early kickoff on Sunday, Crystal Palace lost to Manchester City 
in what was apparently a very competitive match. Raheem Sterling getting two goals. I think he did not get the assist. I thought he did. Um, Gabriel Jesus getting a goal late on. Milivojevic scoring for Crystal Palace. But apparently it was a tough game for Manchester City. Yes, Man City bossed the possession. They bossed the chances. But it wasn't all plain sailing for Man City. But they pulled out the victory and went top briefly. And I say briefly because my team, Liverpool, had done my entire review or reaction, I should say, to the game yesterday. Liverpool beat Chelsea 2-0 at Anfield in what was an impressive, impressive display by Liverpool. And much better in terms of shots on goal. I've been saying that for a long time. I've been saying it for a while. We take, We get a lot of chances. We don't get them on target. And if you get them on target, you've got much more chance of scoring a goal. Obviously, that is the key principle of scoring. It, that, that is scoring. We had 60% possession over the entire game. 10 shots in total. 7 shots on target. So that means we've had, like, what? 70% of the shots on target? Massive. Corners, we had 9. We dominated corners. Not that that really means anything. Chelsea, on the other hand, had 5 shots, 3 shots on target. And it was a pretty blunt display even when they brought Higuain on after the second goal that we scored so we scored the second goal second goal went in and Hudson Odoi made way and that is when they started to look a little bit more dangerous for that 10 minutes when Higuain came on up until the 66th minute just when Naby Keita slowed the game down brought a bit of calm to the game and then Genie Wijnaldum got subbed on it was a brilliant master stroke I felt by Jurgen Klopp to really shut out the game means that Allison has got his 18th clean sheet this season. means that he is not far away from being able to be the Golden Gloves for this season. But it also... Put, oh, also, what a banger by Salah. Cannot forget that ever. I have that on my Twitter feed, and it is just on there all the time. Sometimes even today when I was at work, when I went on my break, just watched it. I was just watching it because, you know what? It's an absolutely class goal. It is a bloody world-class goal by a world-class player for a world-class team. Yes, come on. No, buzzing, honestly, buzz, buzzing, because I actually did feel that this would be a game that could trip us up, that it really could actually put a big dent in our title challenge. And the fact that we came out with a 2-0 victory, a clean sheet, and a dominant performance, I am exceptionally happy with that entire team. Massive performance from Liverpool. And then this evening, we've got Arsenal versus Watford, and I am going to go for a draw. I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw between the two. I don't know whether Arsenal will have the stones to be able to get through that game and pick out the victory. So I'm going for a draw, and I think it could be quite a, quite a tasty match to watch tonight. Anyway, that is this weekend in the Premier League. It's a little bit longer than I like to do it, but I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you've liked some of the content in it. If your team performed well, if your team performed poorly this weekend, let me know it in the comments below. And let me know what you think was the biggest result this weekend. Let me know it in the comments below. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please do like it and subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you once again, and I'll catch you later.